Hello everyone, welcome to the special CUBE Conversations. I'm John Furrier here at the CUBE studios in Palo Alto. I'm joined with Jeff Jonas, who's the co-founder and CEO of a stealth startup called Sensing. Uh, he won't talk about it, I tried to wrestle him to the ground to get information uh, launching later in the month. You're in town, thanks for swinging by. Uh, former IBM fellow, CUBE alumni, uh, some great videos, check out Jeff Jonas, search Jeff Jonas the Cube on Google and check out the videos. We've had great conversations over the years. Last time we saw you were at IBM event, riffing on you know, the, the context of data, uh, you are written up and, and, and recognized by National Geographic as one of the major, the innovator in data space, which is a big honor, congratulations. Thanks man. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it, you couldn't have to do a better person. Lucky, lucky. So what's going on? Tell us about the new startup. <laughs> you know, I had a great run at IBM. They were really good to me when they bought my company. They were good to me for 11 and a half years. I think I was the longest standing founder from an acquired company that IBM ever had. Uh, great run, and then uh, they were good to me on an exit. I, I, I proposed something uh, last in 2016, uh, in June. I kind of like it was a red pill, blue pill, matrix kind of move. <laughs> I went, hey, I got some ideas, but it's time to go. I got to get back to my entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. Uh, blue pill, red pill. Yeah. And uh, they were like, you're, but you're a fellow. You know, go to, go to research and live happily ever after. I you've, said, no, made, I, you've made it, you're a fellow. <laughs> yeah, well, like, anyway, why, well, why would well, you well, do well, anything else? Why would you be a lowly entrepreneur? And it truly is the, uh, the, the, of all the things I've done that I'm like, wow, that was crazy that happened in my life. That's actually the single highest. It's over a yeah. few other things. It's it, a big deal. It is a huge deal, so. But you're an entrepreneur, you're, you're scratching an itch. What, so this is, so what, what happened with the blue pill, red yeah, pill? Yeah, so, so the, and the, uh, one of the options was, hey, I've been working on this thing uh, uh, here at IBM called G2. It was my next generation entity engine. Figures out who's who in your data, matches identities. We've been working on it for years, I think nine years. And I just said, I, I'd like to go build a company around that. And I'll give you a rev share. You'll make more money than if I stay. They were like, oh, that's a great idea. Let's have a partnership, let's do that. So um, August of 2016, I spun out the source code. Who was code. the main executive that got behind this? Was it? Uh, uh, it was Bob Picciano. Bob Picciano, okay, yeah. Yeah, he's very entrepreneurial friendly. Yeah, yeah, and he had to get alignment across a whole bunch yeah. of IBM to make this happen. Uh, Anyways, I just, I'm really fortunate, and the partnership that I have with IBM even to this day is just extraordinary. So uh, did they fund <clears> you as well? Fund, no, I funded it myself for the first uh, five or six months. I took two uh, in money from two private investors that I've known a long time, really smart, strategic money. Uh, they're very active in my business. And you know them? And yeah, you, I've known them for a long time. Uh, one of them was a customer of mine. Yeah. Uh, one I sit on a board with. Uh, you just so the inner She's circle, they're in the boat. You got some good people that you know in the yeah. boat. Yeah, you know, some people are like, how do you manage your investors? I'm like, that, we don't even talk that We much. hang out. Yeah, we <laughs> hang out. They manage me. Yeah. Like, I go to them and they help me. <laughs> that's the way it should be, right? It's different. <laughs> you don't have VCs on your board? No, but that's the formula. That's what you want. Entrepreneurs these days get so starstruck on you know, having investors, but it's hard work. You want to get people <clears> that you trust and you like. Yeah, I learned that in my, in my first company. We had two. Uh, two rounds of venture capital in my first company. I learned a bunch of things, but they were still, they were great investors. It was a great relationship. I learned a lot about VC, because I, I have my own money in, in uh, four VC funds. I've angel funded four or five companies. Uh, but with all of that in mind, yeah. I, I have a really clean cap table. And, uh, but anyway, so we've been off to the races since, uh, 20, uh, uh, since August of 2015. So that's when you left IBM, so yeah. last time we checked, okay. <clears throat> yeah, and then I went into stealth mode. We've been uh, collecting real customers. We've been uh, iterating on the product, uh, our, our calling, if you will. We know when I left IBM, I'm, I sat there with this thing called G2, and I'm like, this is the only thing that makes my team and I special is how to figure out in data, especially big data, who is the same as who across cultures, across languages and scripts. Um, and doing it where you don't need a data scientist, you don't need an expert to tune it. And we did, I did this a, a survey of about 50 companies out there that mm -hmm. are out there in the same business, mm -hmm. uh, selling entity resolution, and almost all of them say call for a quote, because it's also hard. And really, it's hard to find any software that's world class, it's less than a quarter of a million, and you're going to spend a million. And so what we've been doing is working on making it so easy to consume that she had moving it down from high ticket item, probably bolted on a ton of professional services to much more turnkey <coughs> democratize. I mean, yeah, is that getting it totally. Right? You're absolutely right. Like we don't even have professional services. We're like download and try it with, on a subscription license. You pay monthly. We send them the code, so no no data flows to us. 
And when I, uh, this is kind of funny, you know, and it's very private. Oh, I know I'm saying this on your cameras and all, but every team meeting, you know, our mission is smarter entity resolution for everyone everywhere. And then I tell my team, what's going to make our company amazing is no one calls us, everyone loves us. And we've been really working on iterating on that. You know, every yeah. time somebody has any reason they have to call, that's not a moment of joy. And you're launching when? This month, right? Ah. We are launching. Because you're dark, everything's, yeah, there's, nothing yeah, on, yeah. there's nothing on the web. No, right. we, we, sensing.com's on the web, but it's, the, right this split second, it's a hold off, a holding site. There'll be a better, the real site's coming out very, very soon, like in the yeah. order this of next week. This is total week. stealth, dark mode. We're in really dark mode, and uh, although we've been collecting, again, customers and great logos, IBM's a customer, they license G2 from us, um, and, uh, and. So they didn't put money in. No, they did not put money in. Okay. I, I put my own money in. Well, then, I, I guess they bought my company and then I put my money in. So in some <laughs> sense, you could say if you followed the money. Do they own, do they own any, any? No, they don't own any of the company. But, they, but, but there's a business partnership. For absolutely, okay, and it's, it. an, it's, it's, it's an incredible relationship. We have all kinds of interesting things to do with IBM. It's almost as if I'm not left. They just don't give me a paycheck anymore. <laughs> it's, it's Which is there. why they're like, that guy's a fellow, why is he doing that? He's going to go start a company. Why would he do that? Because you're an entrepreneur, that's why. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Well, let me, what are you working on at IBM with the G2? And then, and, and I know you don't want to talk about the product, and I'll respect that, even though I try <coughs> to dig at it, but what I really want to do is, because you're going to launch in a couple weeks anyway, let's get the, the, the aperture of what you're looking at. What is yeah. the, what market are you looking at? What problem's out there? You mentioned an ent entity yeah. uh, is, is one piece. What's the key thing that you're looking at? You know, the key thing is organizations have all of this data in all of these piles, and they don't, they're having difficulty knowing it's about the same person or the same company. And I'll just give you one of my favorite use cases. It's, you know, just G2's been in production already for, for many years. Maybe my favorite deployment uh, to date uh, was deployed in 2012? Yeah, 2012, five years ago, six, um, for a company called Eric. It's a nonprofit, it's run by states. 22 states put their data in there on voter registration data and it's used to improve the quality of election rolls. And it's got my privacy by design features baked into it. And I'm just so damn proud of this thing. You know, the Democrats like it, the Republicans like it. I that's a winner. It the privacy, privacy no community. calls and everyone loves you. <laughs> that one, yeah, no, that's the truth. And the, you know, this system's got a quarter of a billion records, about a hundred million people, and they have one person in IT that runs the entire IT department, including G2. Like this is unheard of. Yeah. So then that, that's been in production for five years. But the, the, the range of companies that are having a challenge with who is who in their data is- And give me an example of what that everywhere. means. I'm trying to grok that who is who. <clears throat> like, like across multiple databases yeah, or- you, give me an example. Well see in the voter registration system, you have somebody's registered in two different states but it's the same person. You've got to get the data together to realize that somebody's registered in two states. And that's because they moved. If you've ever moved between states, you yeah. may have forgotten to unregister. Of course Most I people did. do. Yeah. Well, that's Every illegal. person does. That's illegal. I mean, my 1% would actually go through the motions to Law tell breaker. the state I move. You know? Right. All these jury knows I'm getting in New Jersey. What's happening? Exactly, so you got these two piles of data, but when you combine it, you see yeah. that these two people are the same and they're registered in both. Mm -hmm. So now they can go back to somebody and say, do you want to be yeah. registered in both? But now I'll flip and give an example of companies. There's a, uh, uh, one, of our, one of our customers does supply chain risk. They take uh, vendors from the biggest global brands and in their vendor lists of all these companies across the world, uh, there's, there's duplicates in there. And then of course these companies uh, use the same manufacturer, so there's duplicates across these lists, but this is messy data. Then they scrape the web and look for toxic spills, child labor, and other derogatory data about manufacturers in China, the Philippines, mm -hmm. India. And this is super messy. Entity extracted data off the web yeah. with just the crappiest addresses you've seen. We, um, they got our code on a Tuesday. They didn't call us until Thursday. And when they called us Thursday, they just said, uh, and what they did is they combined all of this data so they could go back to a global brand and say, hey, this um, manufacturer is going to cause you risk to your reputation. Yeah. And you're, so you're, they're, yeah. you're resolving who is who. You're untangling a lot of <coughs> messy data. Yeah. And, and yeah. making it And allows you get insights. And we got a, they, this is the example, they got the software on Tuesday. Without a call, they called us Thursday and said, we've canceled all of our own internal work to try to match all this. We're just using your stuff. It's done. It's, and the last we just heard from them, they just went, the quality of your matching you're doing without any tuning or training. It's a special kind of real-time machine learning that we invented. Mm -hmm. um, no training, no tuning, and it, they just went, it's the, the results it's getting are, are human quality. So, 
obviously you want to talk about price points, but I mean, it's affordable sounds like. It's one, you're trying to make We're, it, yeah. you're, it sounds like you're mission driven nice. on this thing. So it's not like, I mean, I mean, you've already made some good, good dough as an entrepreneur, I thought you're not afraid to make more money, but, but this is a mission driven opportunity. So many organizations no. are struggling with this. We are going to make it affordable to the smallest companies. And I, I'm, I can't quite tell you the price point, but- We take care of us with the cube, think right? Think order of magnitude less <laughs> than any other option. Can you take care of us? Oh, I can hook you up. <laughs> we got duplicates all over the place. And we'll give it to you, or you'll get a, a, a yeah. his and her tell set too. Huh? <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. Um, question for you, um, what's your take on crypto blockchain? Because you, know, you mentioned know your customer is a big part of anti-money laundering big part of, um, you mentioned privacy baked into your, by design there. This is now a phenomenon, and so you look at China with WeChat, they're making real names, be real identity, be part of that system. So <coughs> more and more of yeah. this uh, uh, potential attention, public data is going to be out there. What's your take on Know Your Customer and some of these trends that are involved? Well, in on, you know, on blockchain, what it really is, it's calling. I, I mean, I see a lot of people using the term blockchain around at just anything. Yeah. Because it's a, Buzzword. Got a lot of buzz. Yeah. But the reality is, it is a tamper resistant ledger. And I've been writing about immutable audit logs and tamper resistant ledgers in my privacy by design work before blockchain came out, which is really a distributed form. The value of it to the kinds of work that we do is um, a tamper resistant log allows you to connect it to software so that when, say, somebody searches for something, you can record it in a tamper resistant way. And why would you want to do that? Well, if you've created an index in some central data, you want to make sure it's not being abused. You want to make sure the person that's searching it is not searching up their neighbor or their daughter's uh, new boyfriend. That would be an abuse, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Right, so a tamper resistant auto log would be a great place to put that. That would be a natural thing to do uh, with blockchain. Yeah, awesome. So, um, you get the launch coming. How are you doing? Are you doing any uh, marathons and triathlete, triathlons? What are you doing? I, uh, What's the I latest? think since I was last, uh, on your on your show here, I uh, I became one of three people to do every Ironman in the world, every Ironman triathlon. There's one person in Canada, there's one person in Mexico, and I'm representing America. <laughs> You're the American representative in the in yeah. all triathlons. Uh, in, uh, you know, if you go to the Ironman.com web page, there's a list of races around the world, and I'm one of three that can just look at every single race and say yes, yes, yes. Your yes. favorite, Austria. Why? It was beautiful, it was a great course. It was uh, well run, I had a good time. Beautiful. And your worst? Beautiful. The one you had the bike on the plane and you lost your oh, luggage? Oh, I had, you know, <laughs> I had a really, really dark time uh, this last year at the race in um, South Korea. And this is how bad it was. It's the only race that I walked across the finish. And I sat in this bathtub, this is embarrassing, okay? I sat in this bathtub with the shower thing that you have to handhold over my head, and I was trying to cry, because I was so defeated, but I was too dehydrated to even cry. The, the, the level of down. failure. It just knocks you down. When you can't even cry. <laughs> well, you know, you went from IBM fellow to lowly entrepreneur, how does it feel? I mean, you're back rolling your sleeves up, getting down and dirty, fun, having a blast? I really love being a benevolent dictator. <laughs> How many it's, people on the team? Uh, we're like about 16 if you count people that are full-time or, or half-time or better. Uh, I have a few uh, people that are half-time or better, but uh, yeah, so about 16. Have some fun. Great, Jeff Great. Jonas, uh, we'll be looking forward to your launch, sensing.com, S-E-N-Z-I-N-G.com. Uh, former yeah. IBM, great to see you, and so we'll keep you in touch. And where are you going to be headquartered out of? What's the location? Uh, Venice uh, Beach, California, where I live, although my team is scattered all over the country. We also are licensed in Singapore, and we are hoping to launch Sensing Labs, our R&D activities out of Singapore. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we'll pop down to LA and check you out when you're up and running. Okay, Jeff Jonas stopping by theCUBE here on a great Thought Leader Thursday. I'm John Furrier. Every Thursday we do the Thought Leader interviews with uh, friends, colleagues, CUBE alumni, and more. Always looking for great people. Have to be a thought leader, have to have original content, and be an innovator. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>